in most of the properties, a room attendance day begins in the linen room or in the general housekeeping area. Here, a room attendant will receive their assigned rooms for cleaning that day, collect the appropriate keys and start to assemble their supplies on their carts. Susan here is one of the guest room attendants who ensures the guests are welcome to a clean and comfortable room time after time. In this video on cleaning the guest room, we will be following her through her daily routine. Let's begin with assembling the supplies. Room attendants work with carts. These carts resemble giant toolboxes which contain all the supplies and stock a room attendant will need in order to clean and restock guest rooms before releasing them out for inspection. It will not be effective for a room attendant to be running up and down between rooms and the housekeeping department to pick up supplies as rooms are cleaned. So sufficient stock must be packed and taken along to the room assignments beforehand. After assembling supplies and stocking the cart, room attendants are ready to progress to their assigned rooms to start cleaning. Room assignments are drawn from the room status or housekeeping report which provides information on the condition or status of each room. A room attendant's room assignments will generally be determined by these three room statuses. Check out. These are the rooms where a guest has already left the room and checked out of the hotel. Stay over. These are rooms where a guest will be staying overnight. Due out. In this case, a guest is due to check out today but hasn't done so. After reviewing the room assignments, the room attendant will need to prioritize the cleaning process. Checkout rooms are usually cleaned first, since this can provide clean rooms back to front office quickly. Stayovers follow next. Since these guests are still staying another night and may be in the room at the time when the room attendant is ready to clean. Some stayover guests prefer not to have their room serviced daily and may decline service. Due out rooms are usually the last to be cleaned. To avoid cleaning a room twice, it is better for a room attendant to wait until the guest has actually checked out before cleaning the room. This system of room assignments and prioritizing must be flexible, as a room attendant's first priority is always the needs of the guest. A tag on a door asking for service cannot be ignored, as a guest has asked for his or her room to be serviced as soon as possible. VIP rooms or early arrival rooms may require priority attention. To be most effective, guest room cleaning should follow a logical progression from actually entering the guest room to the final check and departure. Entering the guest room starts when the room attendant approaches the guest room door. Before knocking, check if there is a do not disturb sign on the door, so as to respect the guest's privacy. If there is a sign, a room attendant should make note of this on his or her room assignment sheet and return to the room at a later stage. If there is no sign on the door, knock and announce yourself at the door. This should be repeated twice. If, after three knocks, the guest has not made their presence known, the room attendant should use their key to access the room. The lack of response from a guest does not guarantee that they are not in the room and a room attendant should continue to announce themselves until they can visually confirm the guest is not in the room. Sometimes a guest may not hear the knocking or they may be indisposed. When entering the room, it is always best to do so with caution. Once you have confirmed that the guest is not present, return to the door and place the cart in front of the entrance. This firstly acts as a barrier to prevent someone from just walking into the guest room and secondly allows easy access to all the supplies and stock that the room attendant may need to clean the room. Some hotels encourage room attendants to close the door whilst putting a sign on the door to indicate the room attendant's presence in the room, whilst others encourage the attendant to leave the door open. Both these procedures have advantages and disadvantages and hotels will generally outline what their brand standard or procedure is in this regard. A room attendant should now visually inspect the room to establish the extent of cleaning that will be required before starting. 
A good point to starting the cleaning process is to air out the room and remove items that may cause a lingering odor, such as room service trolleys, food, dustbins, ashtrays, etc. When windows are open, rather switch off the air conditioning or heating. This is also the perfect time to assess if all is in working order. It is also a good idea for a room attendant to firstly make the bed, since this can immediately give the illusion that the room is clean when the bed is neatly made up. Take note of any broken, damaged or missing fixtures, furnishings or furniture and be sure to report it to supervisors as soon as possible. While Susan is busy checking for breakages or damage, we will take a short break. In part two of this video, we will continue with cleaning the guest room. Welcome back to part two of the video, cleaning the guest room. Susan has just finished checking the room for any damage, broken or missing fixtures, furnishings or furniture. Well, let's now move on to making the bed. Before starting to make the bed, take a moment to remove any guest items if the room is a stay over and fold or hang these items neatly. Carefully remove the linen from the bed, layer by layer, to allow the opportunity to inspect the linens for damage or items that may be hidden in the sheets. Heavily soiled linen should be kept separate from other linen so as not to unnecessarily soil the other linen further. These linens may require pre-treatment in the laundry, so it is better to keep it separated. Once all the linen has been removed from the bed, move these to the cart and allow the bed to air out. A room attendant should also inspect the mattress pad and the mattress for damage or stains and report to the supervisor if necessary. When making a bed, remember to mitre or box the corners. To do this, begin with the sheet hanging loosely over the corner. Tuck in the sheet along the foot of the bed, right up to the corner. Take the loose end of the sheet about one foot from the corner and pull it straight out forming a flap. Next, pull up the flap so it is flat and wrinkle free. Now you can tuck in the free part at the corner making sure it is snug. Pull the flap out toward you and down over the side of the bed. Finally. Tuck in the flap and make sure the corner is smooth and snug. Depending on the linens a property uses, the bed may be made using three sheets and a blanket or one sheet and a duvet cover. There are generally four pillows, which should be fluffed and neatly arranged. There may also be a throw or scatter cushion placed neatly on the bed for decorative purposes. Perfect! A neatly made bed makes the room look all the more tidy. Next, let's move on to the bathroom. It's important when cleaning the bathroom that the room is not only cleaned but sanitized as well. A good starting point is to open the window if there is one or turn on the extractor to assist in ventilating and refreshing the room. Start by cleaning the toilet from inside out, leaving the chemicals to do their work on the inside of the bowl, whilst the outside is being cleaned. Once the entire toilet is clean, the toilet can be flushed and given one final wipe. Next, move on to the bath area. Wipe down the walls, top to bottom, clockwise around the room. Do not stand on the edge of the bath to reach high, since you might slip. Rinse all soap scum and chemicals from the tub area before wiping down, drying and polishing. Next, move on to the shower, where the same principles apply. Also, remember to check the drain and ensure there are no blockages or bad odour. And check that the water is flowing freely from the shower head. 
dry the vanity area and polish the fixtures. Lastly is the vanity. Again, moving from top to bottom in a clockwise manner, wipe down the mirror, the vanity, the taps and the basin. Check that the drain is not blocked and water is draining quickly. Check that water from the tap is flowing freely and that both hot and cold water is working. Dry the vanity area and polish the fixtures. Once all the areas have been cleaned, clean the floor from the furthest point in the bathroom towards the door so as not to soil the floor whilst wet. Use the appropriate cloth for the appropriate area and do not cross utilize cloths. Use the appropriate chemicals for the appropriate area. Some chemicals may not be appropriate to certain areas and may damage certain fixtures or surfaces. Excellent job! It's back to the room for some dusting. Move around the room with a dusting cloth and polish solution. Start high to low, moving clockwise to ensure all areas are cleaned and nothing is missing. Everything in the room must be dusted. As a general rule, the following items should be dusted or polished. Picture frames, mirrors, headboards, lamps, shades and light bulbs, bedside tables, telephone, windowsills, window and sliding glass door tracks if possible, dresser including inside drawers, television and stand, chairs, closet shelves, hooks and clothes rod, top of doors, knobs and sides, air conditioning and heating units, fans or vents. When cleaning glass surfaces, ensure that the appropriate cloth and chemicals is used to prevent streaks from appearing. Hmm, what next? Ah oh yes, vacuuming. Now that all fixtures, furnishings and surfaces have been cleaned, remove all cleaning equipment from the room. Collect the vacuum cleaner from the trolley and start vacuuming from the furthest corner of the room, working with your back towards the door. This will prevent you from walking over an already clean carpet. Vacuuming should not be done only around the items, but under them as well, even under the bed. Whilst vacuuming, be careful not to knock the skirting boards or furniture with the vacuum cleaner, which could leave scuff marks or damage. Once vacuuming is complete, pack away all the cleaning equipment on the trolley. Take a moment to walk back into the room to see the room from the guest's point of view. Check that all furnishings and fixtures are placed in the appropriate position and neatly arranged. Close all windows and arrange the window coverings neatly. As a last task, and as you are leaving the room, spray some air freshener if needed. Turn off the lights and close the door. Keep in mind, your last look at the room is the first impression that the guest gains of the room. Finally, change the status of the room on the room assignment sheet and advise the supervisor that the room is ready for inspection. No other feature or service provided by a property will impress the guests more than a refreshingly clean and comfortable guest room. The condition of the guest room conveys a critical message to the guests. It shows the care that the property puts into creating a clean, safe and pleasant environment for its guests. As you have seen in both part 1 and part 2 of this video, guest room attendants take personal pride in creating this message and every aspect of their daily tasks are indeed carried out with great care. The result, this amazing atmosphere time and time again.
Oh, how fresh. I have always liked the scent of freshly washed, clean linen. There's just something so warm about the scent of fabric softener on clean linen. It just makes me feel so at home. And that is what I look for when booking accommodation at any lodging. A spotless, tidy and conveniently arranged room. This is what creates a truly welcoming sensation. Nothing sends a stronger message than cleanliness in a hospitality operation. So where does housekeeping fit into the organization? Let's talk about that. This training video has been designed to help you understand where housekeeping fits into the organization. In order to achieve this, we will be discussing three key topics, namely hotel divisions and departments, housekeeping and front office, and housekeeping and maintenance. We shall begin with hotel divisions and departments. Departments within a hotel are classified according to a variety of methods. One way is by grouping departments by revenue and support centers. Revenue centers typically generate revenue for the hotel, while support center departments support the efforts of the revenue centers in order to provide service to guests. An example of a revenue center would be front office, who sells rooms to a guest. An example of support center would be housekeeping, who clean the rooms but typically doesn't make a revenue. Another classification is to use the terms front of house and back of house. In front of house departments, employees have a great deal of guest contact, whereas back of house departments have little to no guest support. Front office and housekeeping form part of one division, called the Rooms Division. The Rooms Division comprises of departments whose primary function plays an essential role in providing services that guests expect during their stay. The Rooms Division typically generates the most revenue than any other area in the hotel. Departments that form part of Rooms Division include Housekeeping, Reservations, Telecommunications or Switchboard, and Uniformed Services. Front office is the most visible department in the hotel and tends to be the focal point of activity in the hotel. In some hotels, reservations and telecommunications may form separate departments within the rooms division. Alternatively, they form part of the front office. Uniform services include parking attendants, door attendants, transportation drivers, and bell persons or porters, and Concierges. Housekeeping and front office. Within the rooms division, housekeeping's primary communications would be with front office, specifically the front desk, where rooms are assigned to arriving guests. Rooms are assigned to guests prior to their arrival, but guests may not be checked into a dirty room, which may result in either the guest waiting until the room has been serviced or that the room to which the guest is assigned be changed. Each night, the front desk will produce an occupancy report which lists all the rooms that are occupied through the evening. This will allow housekeeping to plan their cleaning activities for the next day, based on the occupied rooms that evening. At the end of the shift, housekeeping will prepare a housekeeping status report, which consists of a physical check of each room in the hotel. The occupancy report and the housekeeping status report are compared to each other to establish if there are any room status discrepancies. If there are, these discrepancies must be investigated and resolved before the end of the shift. This may seem like a lengthy process in which crucial information may not be passed on quickly enough. In most hotels, the property management system, which is the computerized system, streamlines this information, which allows both housekeeping and front office to see the most up-to-date room status as they change. This speeds up the process for these two departments dramatically. Although the front office and housekeeping departments may be at opposite ends of the hotel, they share a mission, creating a return guest. Through the discussion we just went over, it is evident that these departments must work together seamlessly in order to fulfill this common mission. 
Now, let us discuss housekeeping and maintenance. In non-lodging, commercial buildings, housekeeping and maintenance would report to the same department manager. This makes sense, since these two departments share common goals and objectives and therefore foster a close working relationship. In mid-size and large hotels, housekeeping would report directly to front office, whilst maintenance, or engineering as they are also referred to, would function as a division on its own. The responsibility of the maintenance department is the upkeep of the property in terms of the physical structure. Fixing, painting, breaking, building. These are all tasks that would be undertaken by maintenance, whilst housekeeping would primarily focus on the overall property upkeep in terms of cleaning. Housekeeping and maintenance work closely together in preparing clean rooms for front office. As a room attendant is cleaning a room, she may come across a fixture or appliance that may be broken. It should then be reported to maintenance so they can fix or replace the item. Only once maintenance and housekeeping are in agreement that the room is ready to be occupied, may front office allocate the room and check in the guest. If maintenance is, however, unable to fix, correct or replace the broken fixture, furniture or appliance item, the room may likely be put out of order or out of service, depending on the length and severity of the issue. Maintenance can then take a longer time to correct the issue, after which housekeeping can clean, inspect and release the room back to front office. So you see, these neat, tidy and welcoming rooms take a lot of dedicated work with personal attention being given to every little detail. And thanks to housekeeping staff's effective accomplishment of their place within operations of the organization, guests get to enjoy a pleasant and homely stay time after time. Cut out.